Praise the Lord, everyone, as you're coming in, just, um, you know, just make an acknowledgement so we know you're here. We're going to give it a little time for others to join us. Thank God for uh, an opportunity for us to gather together and be able to connect. You can send some love through if you want to. Sure. If you can hear me, send some thumbs up through. So um, we know that during this time of um, the pandemic, we are seeing that um, there are rapid changes. A lot of things are, are happening. And, um, and if you just sit back and you're just soaking it all in, it can lead to a lot of uh, fear and anxiety. And I know that we don't want to minimize anything and, and tell people they they can't be uh, fearful, they can't be anxious. But what we want to do is give you reasons why um, you shouldn't be fearful and you shouldn't be anxious. And so as we are, are grappling with this, what I wanted to do is spend a little bit of time for us to to pray with one another. Uh, we You know, we're not going to be here long, but just wanted to make sure that we, we do... Um, some care for one another. You know, often people refer to self-care. We're, we're now talking about group care. We're going to care about each other and we're going to spend some time uh, supporting one another so we can check in periodically during the week because things change so quickly. Um, we're checking in here on Monday. We'll probably check in again Wednesday, again on Friday. And in between, we'll have Bible study and we'll have prayer. But we want to just uh, encourage you to uh, join in with us and we'll... Um, uh, go before uh, God in prayer, and then uh, we'll spend some time, you know, just just exhorting through the Word a little bit. What I'll do is maybe even take a, a little sample from uh, Sunday's um, message, just take a snippet from that, and just kind of spend a little time trying to encourage you uh, from that. And so, um, as you come on, uh, we, we, we're just encouraging you to. Um, to just allow this to be where you're focused. Uh, don't be distracted by the other things. The reason we chose this time frame is, particularly if you're working remotely from home, um, you should be entitled to a, a lunch break. That That is the law. And so uh, why not take a portion of your lunch break to feed your, your soul? And so let's just take a moment uh, to start out with prayer. And then we'll just um, take a nugget from the scriptures and then we'll kind of move on from there. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing each of us to be able to connect in right now. Uh, you've called us as the church to be a called out assembly. And so we're assembling right now. And we appreciate uh, the op opportunity to be able to come to, before you in prayer. And we also thank you, Lord God, for allowing us that uh, being able to tune in right now uh, we're asking that any uh, fear, any anxiety, Lord, any discomfort, any worry, Lord, uh, that you would help to resolve that right now in the name of Jesus. Some of us, Lord God, might have uncertainty concerning our employment. Uh, we know that um, right now with so many things being shut down that there may be impact on our our uh, our homes, the impact on our financial resources and but God, we just know that during this moment, during this moment in time, uh, we're going to put all of that before you on the altar. Uh, so whether it be a concern about how we're going to uh, pay our rent or pay our mortgage or 
how we're going to be able to deal with uh, the variety of different things that are weighing on our mind right now. Uh, some are concerned about the health of their loved ones. Some are concerned about their own personal health. Uh, whatever it is that we're grappling with right now, God, we ask that uh, you would give comfort like only you can. Bless us to take this time, Lord, to uh, allow you to minister to our spirits, uh, to encourage our hearts today, Lord, and allow us to recognize that in you we can put all of our trust and confidence. Uh, many of us have been looking to our bank accounts. Many of us have been looking to our job. Many of us have been looking to our friends, our spouses. We've been looking to uh, the federal government to be our source. Uh, but right now, Lord God, we're just going to look to you. And we're asking that you would give us guidance, that you would give us direction. Uh, minister to us right now, Lord, and allow us to uh, be open and receptive to what you're doing in this season. We know that we don't have any control over what is happening, but we certainly have control on how we respond, how we react, how we deal with what is happening, Lord. And so right now, we're just asking that you would bless us, uh, that you would lead us and guide us, Lord. Allow us to know that uh, we have you and we also have our brothers and sisters uh, who are called by your name. And all of us trust and believe that you're going to keep us through this process. Even if it gets worse economically, even if it gets worse in many other respects, we're just trusting God that you're going to be a keeper and that you're going to protect us. But most importantly, Lord God, help us right now to prioritize our spiritual well-being that we know that we're going to see your face in peace. And so that's more important than anything else uh, because we don't even have control, even um, as those who are social distancing are still contracting uh, this virus. We just know, Lord God, that we want to be in right standing with you. We want to be in a condition that we'd be ready to be raptured or God forbid that something um, happens that leads to our death. We want to be prepared to see your face. And we want to know that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So God, right now, uh, let us just suspend all other thoughts and all other intentions and focus squarely on you and allow us to be receptive to what you want us to know this season and at this moment the concerning our soul salvation. This we ask in the precious name of Jesus, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so we thank God for um, just being able to trust and believe him uh, right now because um, we don't have any control about what's going on outside our doors. And, and so the best thing we can do right now is to stay prayerful, to also look into God's word uh, for the encouragement uh, that we're going to need. And so there are a couple of things uh, that I would... Uh, in, encourage us to to look at and and make sure we allow this to um, marinate in our minds. And so even as I was preparing um, for Sunday morning's uh, message, as well as preparing for uh, tomorrow night's Bible study, there were a couple of things that that struck me that I just want to share with you. Um, one is found in uh the book of Colossians chapter number two. And the other is found in Isaiah uh, chapter number 54. And um, so Isaiah 54, that's verses 16 and 17. And Colossians chapter two is uh, verses six and seven. And I would share those with you um, because they, they really speak to an interesting point that um, God was impressing upon me um, while we um, were preparing. But while you're finding those two passages of Scripture, I just want to read um, an encouraging Scripture, one that, that always does my heart good, and it's found in Philippians 4, uh, verses 6 and 7. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And so it's during these times that we should be looking to God and thinking on the things um, that are going to keep us encouraged. 
But if you found those two passages of scripture that are found in Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, and Isaiah uh, chapter 54, verses 16 and 17, on Sunday, the message was entitled Fog of War, and it's a three-part series that we're going to be speaking from for the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, but one of the things I, I want each of you to, to recognize is that we are in war right now, a spiritual war. Uh, this is a war that was launched millennia ago. Uh, it's not a brand new war. It, it, it's a war, war that's been going on, but sometimes we don't recognize uh, that we're in wartime situations, and so we can be lulled into getting comfortable. And it's situations like this that often brings us to the point where we recognize that we're at war. Uh, we've been in a spiritual war for a long time. And I think that up until this crisis, uh, many of us spent a lot of our time complaining about the president, complaining about Congress, complaining about the mayor, complaining about this, complaining about that, and we had been lulled into believing that flesh and blood was the problem. Uh, but God made it very clear to us that we don't, we don't war against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. And uh, we have to be reminded of these things. And so if you look at I, I, Isaiah chapter 54, we're going to start there and then we'll come back to uh, Colossians. So Isaiah 54, uh, verses 16 and 17 says, Behold, I have created the smith uh, that uh, bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And so what uh, I, I wanted us to, to kind of glean from that is that God has been preparing us with a heritage to know that the very things that are going to be coming up to oppose us, uh, to make life more difficult, to make life challenging, are things that God has an awareness of. Uh, but he also has prepared us to be able to handle these situations. And so he wants us to know that as he's preparing us for these things, and he's trying to get us to understand these things, uh, that he is going to give us insights on how to be able to deal with these situations. And so one of the powerful things about uh understanding how God works is because he gives us these insights uh, so that we can benefit and be able to navigate these tough waters. And so if we look at Colossians 2, and then we'll put these two together, it says in verses 6 and 7, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as we have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. And so uh, one of the things that, that God is uh, going to be continuing to share with us, and, and we'll explore it in more detail in Bible study tomorrow night, is that God is teaching us the things that we need to know. And the things that he is not sharing with us are things that we may not need to know. Now, this is important because what God is trying to let us know is I'm going to give you the information you need and I want you to walk in that and the information that I don't give you, I don't want you to worry about it. Now, the, the reason this may um, not seem like a, a, a big revelation is, because, well, okay, well, we can only know what we can know. But what God is trying to get us to understand is that our faith in him has to bring us to a point uh, where we're going to walk on his promises and not always be walking based on explanations. The reason many of us are struggling right now is information. We want to know when is this going to come to an end? When are uh, these situations going to be resolved? When 
Are we going to be free to do this? And uh, are we going to see that? And so we have lots and lots of questions and we're looking for explanations. And what God is trying to remind us of is that explanations aren't going to encourage you. Explanations aren't going to satisfy you. So much like a parent that is trying to explain things to their toddler, there's only a certain amount of information that you're going to be able to give them. Uh, because if you are trying to give them a thorough understanding of what it is that's going on, they wouldn't understand it even if you explained it. And even if you did, they would probably uh, end up scared. And so what God is trying to get us to understand is we should be standing on the promises of God, not standing on the explanations of God. God is going to explain to us just enough to allow us to walk and to believe and to trust. He's going to give us glimpses of what is to come uh, so that he can inspire us, but he is not going to be spending all of his time trying to equip us to know every single detail of what he's up to this season. I think many of us have have been in situations where you just want to be able to accomplish a task and you have people asking you along the way, uh, what are you doing? How's it going? Uh, I know the other day I, I we had a, a little issue with the plumbing at the house. And so I'm pulling all of the, um, the different pipes apart. And as you can imagine, um, the last thing I need is somebody trying to ask me, is everything okay? And uh, what are you doing? Can you explain to me what you're doing? Uh, I just need them to know that the plumbing is going to be fixed. Uh, just let me work. And I think that's the same situation we need to be with right now with God is that we just need to let God work and he will give us insights as he believes we're ready for those insights, as opposed to asking him blow by blow uh, information. And I think that that's also what's going wrong right now in this current season is that we're having uh, wire to wire 24 seven press conferences that are just saying the same thing. Um, but behind the scenes, there's a lot more that is happening than what is actually being said. And so I think people of God, we need to, during this time, spend less time trying to gather lots of information and more time uh, putting our confidence in God and walking in the things that he has taught us walking in the things that he shared with us and allowing ourselves to uh, start to consecrate and build ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying and, and studying and interceding on behalf of those first responders and those healthcare professionals and all those that are on the front lines because they're the ones who are being exposed every minute of every day and they need our, our care and our comfort and they need our prayers and, and any resources that we can uh, share with them, that's what needs to be happening. And we should spend less time just sitting in front of a TV or sitting in front of our phones, consuming the negativity and the, um, the anxiety uh, increasing uh, content that is flowing in. And so um, all I would just encourage you to do at this time is to uh, use this time that you have uh, this break that you have between your work projects, because as soon as we finish here, I have to get back to work. I've been on conference calls since early this morning and it'll be in conference calls pretty much all afternoon uh, for work. But what I want us to always do is carve out that time for not only self-care, but for the group care for our brothers and sisters in Christ that we can come together and have time of prayer, have time of inspiration, have time of exhortation. So I thank all of you for tuning in. I thank you all for, for listening. Uh, we'll check back in uh, same time on Wednesday. Uh, if you're available, you can also tune in to Bible study tomorrow night where we're going to explore uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number eight, which speaks to some of these very topics that we're dealing with. And then we'll also be in prayer on Thursday night as well. And so we're just wanting to check in so that everyone will be able to um, know that during their lunch hour or roughly thereabouts, every day they're going to be able to um, have some inspiration uh, through prayer and through an exhortation of the scriptures. And so thank you again for tuning in. Um, we'll share some testimonies uh, as we do this more frequently so that people can be able to um, share how 
uh, this time together has helped them uh, make it through these times of uncertainty and also how this time together has allowed them to uh, be able to battle and, and fight against those thoughts of anxiety and depression that are starting to set in as people uh, find themselves uh, stuck uh, in, in places where you know, social beings do not like being isolated and stuck by themselves. And so um, just knowing this opportunity to come together uh, should be a way for us to connect in a wholesome fashion and be blessings to one another. So when we come back together, I, I want to be able to hear some testimonies of how God is blessing you uh, and allowing you to feel stronger and feel more inspired and, and feeling more encouraged as a result of the time that we're spending together. So as we close, let us uh, do that uh, with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for everyone that has gathered here today. We appreciate the time we've spent together. We ask that even if this was just a moment of reprieve from all the things that may have been bombarding the minds of your people, and we laid them down for that moment. We're just praying, Lord God, that uh, even when we disconnect, that those thoughts aren't going to return, uh, but they are going to be left there at the altar, allowing you to address each and every one of them on our behalf. We know we at Faith Christian Church, we stand on Jeremiah 33 and 3, that if we call unto you, you shall answer us, and you shall show us great and mighty things that we know not. So God, we don't know what you're going to do, but one thing we do know, we know you're at work and we know you're doing something marvelous on our behalf. And so we're going to let you be God. We are like, could you manifest yourself the way you're going to manifest yourself? And we're asking that you would bring us in the loop as necessary, but God, we don't want to interfere with your work. Be God in the season for us. And we'll lift it to you right now in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So just share with your um, friends, colleagues, uh, just just let them know that we're going to be connecting uh, regularly. And if they weren't able to tune in, share this uh, particular um, uh, link to them so that they can watch it at a later time. And hopefully they will also be inspired. So God bless each of you. And we look forward to connecting uh, very soon. God bless.